Welcome into my studio. I've just done a really cute wood mouse on my Patreon art channel. It's something everybody can do if they want to start out with pastels. They run about two and a quarter hours long. And I thought on YouTube I'd show you how I did the underlayer of the head because I know lots of people are interested in pan pastels. So I hope you find this useful. Okay, so I've zoomed in for you and I've got my pans off the right hand side. I've got just regular printer paper here. It's difficult to show everything in one screenshot without me zooming so far back you won't see any details. So that's why on various videos I show perhaps the pan area and not the reference or the reference and not the pans but I can't get it all in. But basically I've got pans which if you're a complete beginner like here they look like this. Um, it's just compressed pastel inside. Okay, now you can do all this underlayer with just pencils. You can do the whole drawing with pencils. The difference is when you look at the pencils, you see how much pastel is in here. You can weigh through your pencils very quick if you're doing, say, a whole pink background. It wouldn't last long with the pencils. But I've shown in many videos just pencils, so don't think if you don't have pans, you can't do the lesson, just use your pencils. So, for instance, this colour permanent red tint in pans is very very similar to a Derwent pale pink. Okay so it's, it's very often you've got very similar colours in the pencils and the pans and of course sticks as well. The reason I like pans for underlayers is because it goes a long way. I can blend easily and I can match up my colours more accurately I find. This kind of um, ochery brown if you forget about the highlights and the darks that we see in that's fairly difficult to find with pencils and I couldn't find anything really that close but with my pans I can use what's that one 740.3 so that's burnt sienna shade I can use that perhaps I want to warm it up some so I could use perhaps that's just the burnt sienna okay so when it's a shade it means a little bit of black is added to it and you can see that quite plainly there. I could add some white to it. If I want it darker then, this is a good color, red oxide, red iron oxide, extra dark. But the, the, what I'm getting at is the thing with, with pans, I can mix here like I would with paint, whether that's acrylic or oils. You'll see me mix in there. So that's what I want to show you. Over on the right, when my hand disappears, I'm just dipping the tool into the pan itself. Right, so let's start. And <clears throat> the first thing that you can sometimes do, or sometimes I like to do, is to indicate where the darks are. Because if I'm going around with, say, the tool, and I may go over an area, I could lose my drawings quite easily, my drawing lines. And I don't want to do that. I want to make sure I don't lose them. So things like eyes, I might outline. Just simply not pushing hard at all. Don't need to push hard ever with pastels. This I might want to just indicate that shape there. And it will get refined after. I could use my pencil on the side to just let me know this is going to be a dark area around here. You see, just lightly. If you can get away with pastels going light means we can get more layers in and I'm just indicating where these darks live nothing more than that and because I'm concentrating here that's that's what I'll just look at now I could do the same with the lights and say well that's going to be quite light in there again just very light pressure that's going to be quite light in there we will have a highlight there we'll have an highlight there and on this drawing oh I've got a frog in my throat <coughs> excuse me um, that's really all that's needed so let's pull those down pick up one of these tools this time okay now usually you see me using these what soft what pan pastels is called soft tools and these are called knives They've all got numbers on them. These are num this is number one with a rounded end. You see me using these or the ones with a pointed end. 
very frequently. But I also use these because the sponges on the tips of these wear out very, very fast and these are more robust. So let's make a start. Let's try and get a pretty accurate colour straight off. Let's see what happens when I'm using just this one colour, which I believe was Burnt Sienna Shade. Yep. I'm using Pastel Matte Light Blue, but you can see it's more of a grey. So let's see what that looks like. Now I'm not worried about the darkest darks. Okay, I'm not worried about the darkest darks in there. I'm not worried about the slightly brighter highlights there. I'm just thinking overall colour. So if you blur your eyes, squint your eyes, that's the kind of colour I'm looking for. Doesn't need to be perfectly accurate. So let's see what happens if I add a little bit of white to that colour. It's not too far out. It's not going to be perfect because that colour I don't have in pans or all the pencil sets I've got. You see that kind of, but that'll be highlight anyway. I think that's close enough. So I just go in because I'll refine all of this as I put more layers on. The most important part, I always say it in my videos, tonal values. That's going to be the most important part. So I'm mixing up a colour there. And usually I'm trying to put it in the direction I'm seeing the fur kind of grow in or sit in. Under the eye will be a little darker. I don't mind if this is a touch more vibrant than I'm seeing in the reference photo. I think that would look quite nice, but don't beat yourself up trying to be exact. You can see this is far from exact. And you can also see my pencil marks through it. Just about, okay? And that's because pan pastels are not completely opaque. Now down here we've got some more of that browny colour. Quite rich colour. And it kind of scoots around there. If you get pastel in an area you don't want, you want to get rid of some of it, just use a microfiber cloth. Wipe it away. Not all of it will come away, but enough. So you can layer on top quite easily again. Okay, so as you can see, that looks nothing like that at all. But I've got to start somewhere. I can't refine it and get more accuracy unless I've got something to start with. I can keep testing my colours. You see under there it's going to be quite light and bright under there. Test my colours on a little scrap piece of paper. It needs to be the same colour paper that I'm using, otherwise it's irrelevant and it just won't work. In the ear, we've got more of a pinky colour going on. That's quite close. So there I used a colour I use quite often, permanent red tint, and I put a tiniest, tiniest touch of burnt sienna in there. And once again, it's not super accurate, but it doesn't need to be. The thing that gives us a three-dimensional feel to it is the um, tonal value, as I said. dark under there. All of it will be refined with 
pencils. See, it's quite black there. Even the black, pure black with pan pastels is not a very dark black. I always need to use pencils to really get the darkness that I need. But for an underlayer, it's perfectly fine. Don't put much pastel on at this stage. We can always add more on top. A little bit of darkness up there. As you can see, when the darks go in, it starts to begin to take a bit more shape. Okay, and then it goes with dark brown then. Around here. And then it's quite a warm, rich color there. And what I'd do, I think, is just leave this section then and concentrate more on the head so you can see that develop while I've got the camera zoomed in. If I feel I need some more richness in some areas I can just you know dot it in, blend it out. It's easier to subdue a colour than it is to make it richer. So if you've got a colour that needs to be dark, you know, go a bit punchier as you put it in initially and then subdue it after. Okay, just blow a bit of that dust away from me. It's not much pastel dust anyway. I'm using my finger and I'm just clean finger, just pushing that in to give me kind of a blurry looking beginning and under layer. As you can see, it doesn't look that brilliant. Now, I really need some of the under the background in to be able to judge this better. By putting some background in, I can then assess if I've gone dark enough, light enough on the main subject. So I'm using permanent red tint and then to purple it down a bit, violet tint. You see straight away that helps to separate the mouse from the background. But I'm not going to put a lot of this in. And the reason being I don't, you can see it's a clean looking background and I don't want to really contaminate that with potential pastel dust falling onto it, especially dark pastel. So I'm just going to put a little bit of it around here just to, as I said, help that background separate from the subject. And then down here it goes more into a purpley grey, they blend together and that's where pans are very very useful because you can easily blend with them. And then as I come down further it goes bluer, greyer. And I'll put that texture on later on. But that kind of, as I said, goes more blue and grey as we come down here. And then blends back up. Okay. 
So now I've got that in, I can assess it, like I said, a bit more accurately. This all acts just as a base layer, as you'll see in a moment. A little bit lighter as it comes around there, goes up. Down here will eventually be more of a grey. I'll be around about by there. So eventually go quite dark up here. Right, but let's leave that for now and come in I think with some pencils because it's only a small drawing and pencils are suited very well to put in detail into small areas. If you're struggling to draw animals or to improve your art, I can share with you the techniques I've learned over 25 years so that you can avoid frustration and trial and error and start to enjoy drawing and creating straight away. Hi, my name is Jason Morgan. I'm a professional artist and I would love to be your guide on your unique art journey. I've fallen in love with past laws and I'm sure you will too. There's really no other medium that has the vibrancy and color intensity and the ability to put light over dark, that's an absolute game changer for the animal artist. Now on my channel, you get immediate access to hundreds of hours of lessons and demonstrations, and you go completely at your own pace. There's absolutely no rushing in my art channel and lessons. Think of it like a video library. You pick the video you like, something that really takes your fancy, and you take as long as you want to complete it. Or, alternatively, you can watch my videos, learn the techniques, and apply them to the subjects that really inspire you. And you also get new reference photos each month. They're copyright free. You can use them in your art, sell your art, no worries whatsoever. Many of my artists came to me with little to no art ability whatsoever, and they're truly amazed with what they're now creating. You could be doing that as well. Now don't think age is a problem, you're really never too old to start learning and enjoying art and many of my students are 40, 50, 60, 70, even 80 years of age. Now my channel is about much more than lessons and techniques. You also get access to my secret private Facebook group and that's full of members that's literally grown up with my channel. They're super supportive and kind. They come from all over the world. So if you've got any questions, you can rest assured there's going to be someone there really quick with a solution to your problems. Now, with my channel, you're not tied into any contract. You can literally come and go as you please. You can go up tiers, you can go down tiers, whatever you want. And there's a tier and a price to suit literally any pocket. Now I've been doing art lessons for many, many years and I really pride myself on trying to create the absolute best lessons and demonstrations I possibly can. I really hope to see you there soon so you can start your art journey and I can't wait to see what you can achieve.